Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Reviews. Today we're going to talk about Uncanny X-Men issue 15, This Is Forever, part 5, written by Matthew Rosenberg and drawn by Salvador La Roca. But before we get into that, I want to tell you guys about Titan Comics, one of my favorite comic shops here in the Dallas area. They feature an expansive collection of new comics, back issues, statues and trades, and also has a massive eBay store featuring hundreds of items. Titan Comics is in the North Dallas area, but if you're looking for a hard to find item, give them a call and they can ship just about any world, anywhere in the world. Be sure to check out their website and Facebook and I'll have all of their links in the description box down below. Alright, Uncanny X-Men 15. This issue was absolutely incredible. I loved everything that's going on in this one, so let's dive right in. We will be talking about a lot of spoilers and there's some big stuff going on in this one, so let's dive into it. First off, I've really been enjoying these kind of cold open pages where it's just basically an entirely black page with one red um, text box on it. I've I've been enjoying that. Um, also been digging the you know the character outline and the the um, the previously on basically. However, this issue once we get past that previously on, and this has nothing to do with the actual story encased in this comic. Once we get past that, we go right to a two-page ad. Now, I do not like two-page ads in my comics. They often just break up the flow of the comic, and this one breaks up the flow of the comic before you even get into the flow of the comic. It's annoying. Um, anyway. Getting on to the actual meat of the story, we get an interesting moment here with Dark Beast and Shan, who he says, um, can I ask you a question? Um, you feel um, like it's maybe it's just your inf alien infection, but I sense a sadness inside of you. And she starts talking and says, what if I, he says, what if I could help you? And immediately alar alarm bells start going off. It's like, Dark Beast wanting to help? That, uh, that doesn't sound right. Like, maybe he'll help, but he only wants to help for his own purposes. So, we'll see where that goes. Um, there's more about that later on in the book, but in the end, we'll see where it goes. Um, then we get back to where we left off last issue with Captain America, Steve Rogers himself, showing up at the the bar where the X-Men are staying, and he wants to talk to the X-Men and he basically says, I know you're working with Valerie Cooper from the State Department. You can't trust her. And Scott's like, can I trust you? I can't even trust you. Um, and he says, um, if you want my help, I'd to offer a suggestion. Be discreet. You don't have to do what you're doing in the public eye. And Scott says, it's not our fault that people are afraid of who we are. But he says, but it is your fault they're getting killed in the streets by one of your fights. Which is an entirely on point assessment you know i remember one i can't i have no idea what issue it was but i think it was a rogue that said we cause more collateral damage than god and that is a very true statement their fights are big and brutal and messy so i can understand i think it was in i saw a subreddit uh or a post on one of the reddits or uh, subreddits that said I would hate the X-Men if the X-Men were real. Not that I would hate mutants, but I would hate the X-Men for just how much pain and anguish and destruction they cause. So you can see Captain America's point here. Um, basically, he gives them like a like a card, like a he's like, here's my card, call me if you need help. Um, and I really like this. Um, uh, Logan says, uh, one with a strong silent play I see, and, he's, and Cyclops is like, too much, and Wolverine's like, eh, always works for me, I really dug that, um, and then he's like, uh, so what do you think, he's like, you're actually asking my opinion, Cyclops then is like, yeah, I'm trying this new thing, you know, trying to be better, and blah blah blah, and then Logan's like, well, he's right about one thing, you shouldn't trust anyone, including him, then one, uh, uh Miracle, uh, Miracle Man, Multiple Man, uh, shows up and says, hey, we got a call on that uh, the on Reaper's phone, which was one of the MLF members they got uh, captured last issue. Um, then they have, they show up to this rally, and there's this great scene here with Jono Chamber, where he just clocks uh, a bigot, which I, I really enjoyed. Um, then the MLF show up, they get into a big fight, cool uh, layout here, although some of the art, uh, some of the continuity between it seems really weird to me because 
Uh, Cyclops is right here. He gets punched in the back by the guy with multiple arms. I don't know his name. I'm sorry. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, you turn the page, and they're, like, 25 feet away from each other. Like, there's... I, I just watched a YouTube video about continuity when filming scenes, and, like, earlier this afternoon. So this really bugged me, but, eh, I'll, I'll let it go. So they get into a big old fight, and there's someone here named Miss Prestel. Don't know who she is. Don't know why she's important. Um, get into a big fight. Um, then Magic... Uh, portals Cyclops up to a rooftop where there's Banshee looking all zombified for some reason. Um, someone commented in an earlier video that they thought Banshee was dead, and I'd been out of comics long enough that I hadn't read that, so I went to Wikipedia like one does and read up on him, and he did die, but was brought back in the Necrotia storyline, so I guess he's kind of a zombie? Zombie Banshee? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. If someone has more information on that, please let me know in the comments below because I'm a little bit confused. And then Hope is there and she's got a sniper rifle. Um, then they have some great conversations about you know what family means because Hope is um, Cyclops' granddaughter, Cable's daughter, and you know um, she says you know Cable didn't mean anything to you, and he's like he was my son. Um, it's like, even though you failed him, he may have been your son. He was definitely my father, and I failed him too. And now he's gone. You know what that makes us? Nothing. Basically, like, Cable's gone. We have nothing in common anymore. And then this is where th this comic, for me, takes right off. Um, uh, Banshee's about to attack, and Cyclops zaps him. Hope trains a gun on Cyclops. Wolverine shows up there in the background. Where are we? Stabs her right through the chest, and then Cyclops gets shot in the face, right in the visor. Boom. I don't know if you can catch that. See if I can get that right on camera. Oh, man. Pops him right in the visor, which is just a callback to the cover here, which I love this cover. I thought this was like a psychic blast, like someone like was like you know psychically hitting him or something like that, or telekinetic or something like that. Had no idea it was going to be a bullet. Damn. Um, then we, like, turn the page here, um, then, like, uh, Hope can, like, absorb powers, kind of mimic powers, and she, like, laser blasts, Cyclops blasts, um, Wolverine, I love this, and Wolverine says, you're gonna die for that, she's like, wait, Logan, wait, you forgot, forgot what? You forgot who the hell I am, and then, boom, blast him, oh, Really cool stuff, especially for me, because I don't really know much about Hope Summers. And then she says, thanks for letting me borrow your powers, Grandpa. I thought that was a cool line. Then she gets back on her sniper rifle and kills, presumably kills, Mrs. Prestel. No idea who uh, that person is. Then we get this great scene here where you hear Reed, hear Reed, snicked, whatever you want to hear that, right through her chest and get this, like, charred up Wolverine right there. Hope's got the blood coming out of her mouth. And then she gets lit. He lifts her off by the claws in her chest and then chucks her. Logan, or uh, not Logan, uh, Cyclops is still alive. He's bleeding all on his shirt and then he just faints. Then he we flash to Harry's hideaway. It says six days later. So Scott's been in a coma or unconscious for like almost a week. He is alive and it says... Um, uh, Dark Beast healed him, apparently, or served as his doctor, and he says, You're fine. Everything is fine, although your nom de guerre is slightly more apropos than you'd like, I'm afraid. Um, so basically, Cyclops lost an eye. Like, he just got his eye shot out. Holy crap. Um, that's huge. That is really huge. It just shows the stakes of this story. Um, then they get into... Um, some conversation, like, Alex comes in, and then Scott finds out that Dark Beast did experiments on all three of the ex of the members of this team that had the transmode virus in them, um, and he tries to go back and, you know, get in his face, and then he lights up his eye, which is really cool, you can only see the one eye, because this eye's gone, he only has the one optic blast, but it almost breaks his head, and he says, and Dark Beast says here, oh, did I forget to mention that? Your skull is barely held together with 
With your I-beams constantly firing, you run at perpetual risk of blowing your head off. But when you increase the focus and become its intensity like that, it becomes a... Uh, um, like he like he's gonna blow up his own head because the pressure is too much from his trauma. Then it turns out that Dark Beast actually did heal the three that had the transmode virus, um, which again I thought was squirrely from the beginning. And then we turn the or we go right here and it says um, the transmode virus isn't actually a virus; it's more of a parasite. It can feed off a host. Uh, this parasite didn't just come from your old friend Warlock. It is warlock um and then they found someone to take it take that on and we have a jamie madrix clone here that has like absorbed all of the transmode virus and is turning back into warlock and it says hello friend please kill me my focus went away oh really really cool issue great great issue i have been loving the hell out of Uncanny X-Men. Hopefully you have been too. Um, it's been great. I cannot wait for next issue. It's been fantastic, guys. What did you think about this? What do you think about Cyclops actually becoming a Cyclops? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. This is your first time here at the channel. Hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.